or 20, 2017 at 8.46 p.m. Updated, October 20, 2017 at 8.51 p.m. Phoenix, by Friday, the Lakers were on to the Phoenix Suns and Lonzo Ball had shifted his focus to Eric Bledsoe. Beyond the walls of the visitors' locker room at Talking Stick Resort Arena, however, the news cycle was stuck on Ball's professional debut the night before and a perception that the number two overall draft pick had flopped. Coach Luke Walton heard those opinions and came to his young point guard's defense ahead of the Friday's game. Related articles Do the Lakers have a Julius Randle problem? Clippers Patrick Beaverly gives rude welcome to Lakers rookie Lonzo Ball. Magic Johnson passes torch, but Lonzo Ball era begins with lopsided loss to Clippers. Miller, Lonzo Ball, Lakers open new era mid turbocharged hype. I think Lonzo's getting a bad rap for getting destroyed his first game, Walton said. Personally, I thought he could have had a double double with rebounds and assists. Ball tallied nine rebounds and four assists, but the Lakers shot just 40% from the floor. We didn't make any shots, Walton said. He'll figure out when to get his shots. I thought he was fine last night. It's a good learning experience for everybody. Ball was relentlessly hounded by Clippers point guard Patrick Beaverly, who acknowledged after the game that he wanted to send a message to Ball and his boisterous father, Laver. Beaverly remained combative, screaming profanities aimed at Ball after the game had ended, something Walton said did not surprise him. He's a hard-nosed player, and he has success by getting into people and getting under their skin, Walton said. He sees a rookie point guard out there. That's exactly what he's going to try to do. The opposing point guards won't get any less daunting. After facing Bledsoe on Friday, the list of his upcoming matchups is a veritable gauntlet of talent and tenacity. In order, Drew Holiday, John Wall, Kyle Lowry, Ricky Rubio, soon followed by Damian Lillard, Mike Conley, Kiri Irving, Wall again, and reigning rookie of the year Malcolm Brogdon. That doesn't even include the November 2 matchup with D'Angelo Russell, who will no doubt be looking to prove the Lakers are in trading him. Not that Ball should be looking that far ahead. We want him to stay more present in the moment, Walton said. He's got more on his plate than to try to get him to wrap his head around the list of point guards he's got coming in. But they are still coming. It's always someone, especially in the starting lineup, that's really darn good at something, Walton said. He'll have his work cut out for him each night, but each night will be a unique, especially the first time through, the schedule will be a unique learning opportunity for him. Inactive, Zubak. For the second straight game, Ivica Zubak was on the bench in street clothes. The Lakers' second-round pick in 2016, Zubak started 11 games last season and was often included in conversations about the organization's cherished young core. In his second season, however, he hasn't been a factor. Walton said it has been a numbers thing that kept Zubak on the inactive list. With Ball coming off a sprained ankle and Contavious Caldwell Pope suspended for the first two games of the season, it was more important to Walton to have guard depth. So Josh Hart and Alex Caruso have remained active. Zubak struggled in summer league and has acknowledged that he thought it would be easier given his experience in the NBA. I've talked to him. Since then and he has changed his attitude and preparation and changed his body since summer league, Walton said. He has got to be more aggressive in the way he attacks the ball, but he is coming along nicely. The other player joining Zubak on the inactive list Friday was something of a surprise. Veteran Luo Deng, who started Thursday night's opener. Against the Clippers he scored just two points in 13 minutes. Against Phoenix, Walton said he wanted more natural energy, which led him to start Corey Brewer instead of Dang.